I comprehend your perspective. And I've duly taken it into account. Allow me now to convey my decision. My forthcoming wedding with Terry will occur very soon. And we would be honored to have your presence at the ceremony and reception. Brian exited the room. Choosing to ignore his mother's distress despite her lamentations. He closed the door firmly. But with care. Opting not to slam it shut. A final gesture signifying the conclusion of the conversation. Meanwhile. Stephanie still clutched her heart in distress. While her husband. Bernard. Absent-mindedly manipulated buttons on the remote control. Sensing his wife's agitation. Stephanie pleaded with Bernard to intervene. Expressing her anguish over the situation. Bernard agreed that the circumstance was distressing. Acknowledging Stephanie's distress. He had attempted to reason with Brian. But the response remained resolute. Brian's decision to marry a girl from the countryside. A choice that his mother found difficult to accept. Loomed over them. Bernard. 2. Harbored reservations about his son marrying someone. Without a familial background or societal standing. Raised solely by her grandmother in a rural setting. Brian's upbringing had been meticulously orchestrated by his parents. Involving significant investments of effort. Resources. And education to ensure his success. The prospect of Brian. Who had established his own successful business. Choosing a partner seemingly outside their social circle perturbed them deeply. Glancing at his weeping wife. Bernard's irritation grew. However. Attempting to console her. He cautioned against excessive worry. Assuring her that he would attempt another conversation with Brian. Moreover. He subtly suggested that even if the marriage were to proceed. Divorces were not uncommon. Minimizing the perceived tragedy of the situation. Bernard. What are you suggesting? Do you truly believe it's that straightforward? Marriage. Divorce. And that's the end of it children are born in such unions. Sometimes more readily than in seemingly equal partnerships. And what about reputation in what century are we living? Bernard exclaimed. Rolling his eyes. Where do divorces and children from? Affairs hold such contemptible weight. It's laughable. He urged Stephanie to cease her hysteria. Reputation means nothing to you. Apparently. He added dismissively. But what about our son's emotional well-being? How will he cope with a failed marriage or divorce? Stephanie fretted. Her anxiety evident. You're acting foolishly. Bernard snapped. His patience wearing thin. Stop this dramatic display in front of me. Emotional stress what else will you come up with a sin? Before the Lord a minus to karma your fear revolves. Around Terry potentially causing financial losses. That's your concern. And it's mine too. Let's focus on that. Not on metaphysics. I'll speak to him rationally when he calms down. Using examples from life. Bernard was confident in his approach. Drawing from personal experiences and costly mistakes. He had made in his youth and even in more mature years. He understood the consequences some decisions could incur. And was determined to convey to his son. The repercussions of indiscriminate relationships. As he contemplated the situation. Bernard recognized that. Despite Terry appearing as an angelic figure at first glance. Such seemingly innocent figures often carried hidden dangers. He believed it was crucial to warn his son about the potential risks. Meanwhile. Brian secluded himself in his room. Endeavoring to cool off after the intense conversation with his parents. However. Brian was aware that his parents were somewhat snobbish. And might not enthusiastically embrace his girlfriend. Still. He couldn't resist the desire to bring his beloved home. And introduce her to his parents. 
reflecting back. He wished he had foreseen the trouble it would cause. Perhaps. If he had known. He would have taken a different approach. After the wedding. Simply informing them. I have gotten married. And this is my lawful wife. Please love and welcome her. Or maybe he wouldn't have introduced them at all. As some independent adults do. After all. He was financially stable and self-sufficient. He couldn't comprehend why Terry hadn't pleased his parents. Despite being an orphan raised by her grandmother in a village. Brian viewed it as a positive journey. Terry had emerged from that background. Pursued a good education. Possessed excellent taste. Manners. And style. And. Most importantly displayed unwavering honesty. She didn't fabricate stories or pretend to be someone she wasn't. Admittedly, Terry didn't have wealth. But Brian saw that as a transient state. He believed she'd eventually surpassed their financial status. Was his parents unhappy about his decision to marry at 26? He felt it was time for such a step. Brian regretted orchestrating the introduction as his parents desired. It had ended in embarrassment for everyone and caused hurt to Terry. Despite his parents' efforts to welcome her by setting a nice table and maintaining courteous behavior, they couldn't hide their underlying disdain. Yet, Terry's perceptiveness didn't go unnoticed. She discerned her mother-in-law's subtle disapproval and her father-in-law's almost blatant mockery. When Brian returned home after that formal dinner, Terry, with a weary smile, remarked. They don't like me. Brian even paused the car, attempting to reassure her that she was marrying him, not his parents. He yearned for her presence beside him, because his love for her was profound and sincere. Nevertheless, his parents' opinions held significance in his life. Worries crept in. What if conflicts arose due to her? And in time, he realized he had hurt his parents this fear haunted him because, in his view, a man could marry multiple times, but parents were irreplaceable. Terry, please don't fret. Firstly, I assure you I won't engage in any disputes. Secondly, tell me, why do you believe they hold something? Against you it's just the initial meeting and understandable prejudices exist. They're uncertain about what to anticipate from you. I don't comprehend their apprehensions. And I doubt they're expecting anything negative. You're incredible. Terry. And I'll always stand by your side. No matter what. It's certain that I'll only have one wife. If everything goes right. No one can ever separate us. Brian was willing to sever ties with his parents for her sake. As for him, parents would always remain parents. There could never be replacements. Just as he could never have another son for them. In that fleeting moment, his father entered the room. Rapping gently on the door. Have you calmed down? Rebel. He asked. Attempting to adjust his tone. I wasn't nervous. Everything's fine. Dad. You and Mum seem to be worrying for no reason. Everything seems alright. Brian reassured. Why be rude then your mother is upset. She's crying. She has hypertension among other things. His father conveyed. What's there to cry about what's the tragedy here? Did I choose to get involved with a criminal? Elope with a nomad? Or engage with a married woman 20 years my senior. What's the big deal at first glance? Everything seems fine. Your Terry is a charming girl. I even envy you. She looks wonderful. But what about her inner self? What's her character like? You can't discern that in just a few months. His father expressed concern. The moment I saw her. 
I knew she was exceptional. Brian exclaimed. Yes. But how old is she 23 years old? How has she managed to thrive here? Since leaving her rural background, how did she become so graceful? And confident on her own or maybe some man? Or even multiple men? Helped her? Inquired his father. Look. Father. I won't tolerate insults about my bride. If there's something you don't like. I know I'll leave home with her. And we won't see each other anymore. Bernard continued. Resigned. It's your prerogative. But think for yourself. Is this a long-term decision? I've suffered immensely in my life because of women. Their avarice. Their inclination not just to shape. Their own lives but to dismantle men's lives. That's not about Terry. Brian sharply retorted. Are you sure I still advise caution? Try to delve deeper into her background. His father cautioned. You're not planning a moonlit stroll. You're planning to intertwine your life with hers. I believe her dad. And she believes me. We know all we need to know about each other. Brian staunchly affirmed. Firmly convinced of his stance. However. His father held a contrasting opinion. Are you certain she doesn't already know more than you think? About your bank accounts. Your company. Including childhood illnesses. And even the girl you first kissed in fifth grade. His father continued. Trying to caution Brian. Brian chuckled. Dad. Forgive me. But this seems like some kind of paranoia. Still. Consider my words. I've lived my life. Seen it all. And I wish you only the best. I'll be thrilled if everything is well between you and Terry. Have any of your friends faced similar situations? Bernard spoke without pressure. His weariness and sadness palpable. Leaving a strong impact on his son. After his father had left. Brian sat pondering the conversation. He trusted Terry implicitly. She had never lied or concealed anything from him. He had no reason to doubt his beloved. Yet. He also trusted his father. Who genuinely wished the best for him and had a wealth of experience. Brian didn't want to delve too deeply into his father's secrets. But his mention of incidents involving Brian's friends resonated deeply. His friends. Mostly from affluent families had encountered situations that had cost them nerves and money. Especially due to the deceitfulness of women. Memories flooded back of Harry. His friend with the pale, swollen face. After a recent love debacle that led to a multi-day binge. I loved her. Brian. Believe it or not. Truly. Forever. I gave her my soul wrote poetry I'd never written before. Harry lamented. Intoxicated and tearful. But it turns out she didn't want a soul or sonnets. She wanted money. To support her other beloved. Now in jail for attacking her. I composed poems and sang songs to her like a fool, Harry drunkenly cried out. Brian vividly recalled seeing a photo of that girl whose actions had shattered Harry, capturing the essence of that heartbreak. She was undeniably stunning. Her eyes radiated sincerity and truthfulness. Yet she was embroiled in an unsettling narrative. Take another friend. Bill. For instance. Frequently spotted in the company of a woman. Whose beauty was indescribable. Not only was she beautiful, but she possessed intelligence and education that bespoke nobility. Her musical talent on the piano hinted at her refined background. However, her past revealed a stark contrast. Once an escort, she ascended to the rank of an elite mistress, stripping several affluent individuals to the bone, including Bill. Brian abruptly halted his thoughts. 
questioning himself for drawing such comparisons between Terry and individuals from his past experiences. He felt he was straying from reason and allowing his father's cautionary tales to sway his judgment. These stories mirrored the misfortunes of friends who couldn't distinguish princesses from monsters. Yet, Brian knew Terry was entirely unlike them. She was cut from a different cloth. Despite what others might think, he firmly believed in her integrity. He had never contemplated testing her loyalty or honesty. But now, a strong desire surged within him to showcase Terry's integrity openly. Not as a test but as proof. Brian speculated that revealing Terry's honesty might prompt a change in his parents' perceptions. Once they grasped the truth, a few days before their wedding, during a casual conversation, Terry mentioned her frequent need to travel for work and conduct site inspections. Although she had a designated car and driver, unforeseen circumstances often led her to resort to ordering a cab. Brian seized upon an innocent idea. Checking if Terry could drive. Do you have a driver's license? Brian asked. Intrigued. I do have a driver's license. My uncle. A driving instructor. Taught me how to drive. And I passed my test on the first try. Terry replied with a smile. Neither hinting nor expecting anything from Brian steadfast in refusing overly expensive gifts. During the initial stages of their relationship, Brian attempted to gift Terry a gold bracelet, thinking it would be a thoughtful gesture. However, to his surprise, the gesture offended Terry. She expressed her sentiments firmly, stating she wasn't a relative or a mistress. And while flowers or an invitation to a cafe were acceptable, jewelry wasn't. Brian had to apologize, realizing his mistake. Later, Brian suggested that Terry use his new car, now that she had her driver's license. Despite his offer, he expressed concern about her safety, not due to fear of scratches on the car but out of worry for her well-being. He fretted over the possibility of Terry being too tired or encountering an unsafe situation with a taxi driver, seeking to alleviate his concerns and monitor her safety. Brian discreetly installed a hidden video camera in the car. He rationalized it to himself as a gesture of caring for her, and worrying about her safety, all the while subconsciously avoiding the thought that the camera might capture something disagreeable. Initially, the recorded footage appeared mundane. Terry ran her errands, refrained from taking passengers, and spoke mostly about work-related matters, with Brian over the phone. However, Brian felt a growing sense of shame for his clandestine act. He contemplated removing the camera and apologizing or simply not mentioning it at all. His internal conflict persisted, and as he waited, a day arrived where the footage revealed something disconcerting. On this occasion, Terry's trip didn't seem related to work. She parked the car near her house and stepped out, waiting for someone. Soon, an unexpected figure emerged. A poorly dressed, elderly man. His appearance suggested nothing of a lover. Yet Terry's reaction was visibly filled with warmth and happiness. She approached the man and embraced him tenderly, their interaction exuding a heartfelt connection. As they gazed at each other affectionately, someone unfamiliar with Terry might have assumed the older man was her father due to the warmth of their greeting. But Brian knew that Terry didn't have a father. The man, visibly weathered by life's hardships, couldn't be a blood relative. This realization left Brian puzzled. Why was Terry so delighted to see this man? Embracing him with such happiness. Driven by concern and confusion. Brian abandoned everything and hastily followed their car. 
he hoped to witness something that would offer an explanation. And assuage his growing unease. Fortunately, Terry's car stopped not too far ahead in a secluded area. Brian chose not to divert his attention to the camera. And instead approached the scene to witness. What was unfolding firsthand. Opening the door with urgency. Brian found Terry seated beside the man. They seemed to be engrossed in conversation. Holding hands with tears shimmering in Terry's eyes. Her unexpected encounter with Brian visibly surprised her, rendering her momentarily speechless. Similarly, the man sat quietly, visibly taken aback by Brian's sudden appearance. Struggling to articulate her emotions, Terry finally managed. Brian. This is my father. Paul. Dad. This is my fiancé. Brian. We are getting married. Brian's reaction was one of indignation. Wasn't it just a few days ago that she didn't have a father? He retorted. Feeling the sting of confusion. However. Terry. Regaining her composure. Took charge of the situation. She urged Brian to sit down. Acknowledging that he had followed her. And was likely curious about the situation. Her father, Paul, intervened with a calming tone. Wait. Daughter. It's clear he's jealous because he loves you. Calm down. Young man. Yes. I'm not her biological father. But I adopted her right after she was born. And for the last few years. I've been in prison. Paul's revelation was unexpected and Terry's apparent reluctance to acknowledge. This aspect of her past suddenly made sense. Her embarrassment and hesitance to admit. The existence of this relative. Were likely due to his time in prison. A fact she had concealed. Now. Everything seemed to fall into place. I was released earlier than expected. And I have the documents to prove it. Here. Take a look if you doubt me. My daughter Terry, despite feeling embarrassed by me, assures me that she won't abandon me. Isn't that right? Daughter. Yes. Dad, I'll never abandon you. Terry affirmed. Judge me as you wish. My mother passed away. And now my father is here. He won't interfere. But I can't let him go. I'll support him as much as I can. Thank you. Terry. I knew I could count on you. Her father acknowledged. All right. I agree. Brian said apologetically. I'm sorry. Terry. I didn't know what came over me. I love you. And I must accept your family. I invite you to our wedding in two days. I'll cover expenses for the salon, hairdresser, and a suit. If you're short on time, you can borrow one of mine. Our sizes are similar. Thank you. Brian. Terry responded. But you don't need to worry about money. I'll assist my father myself. And yes. I'd love to have you at my wedding. Dad. Great. I won't disrupt your wedding. I won't attend the registry office. However, I'll stop by the restaurant to congratulate you quietly in a corner. I fear I might bother your parents. Regardless of what suit I wear. Brian felt embarrassed. Well, my parents won't mind. They'll be pleased to meet you. He muttered. Knowing he wasn't entirely truthful. Terry sensed this too. Deep down. Terry wouldn't have minded a wedding without parental involvement. She trusted her father not to cause any trouble. However. She worried that her in-laws might spoil things. Possibly with sarcastic remarks or just a dissatisfied demeanor. Nonetheless. Terry realized that having a wedding without parental involvement was impossible. 
and Brian wouldn't agree to it either. Despite this, she understood that enduring it was necessary. As many people wouldn't comprehend her desire for a wedding without parents. Not being accepted by one's partner's parents wasn't a flaw. But Terry had faith her father would behave appropriately. On the day of the wedding, the formal ceremony proceeded smoothly. Bernard and Stephanie, while not radiating with joy, didn't display any notable sadness regarding their son's marriage. Brian conversed with them, praising Terry's virtues and having complete faith in her. He hoped that his parents would soon come to adore her, avoiding any strain in their relationship. We won't be living together for just three days or three years. It's a lifetime commitment. We'll all be together. Brian explained. Let's live in harmony. We have no other choice. Stephanie added. Reassuringly. Of course. We won't spoil your celebration. His father echoed. Relax. Son. Don't worry. His father comforted him. Everything will be fine. We have no objections to your bride. After the official registration, the wedding party transitioned to the restaurant. Terry appeared anxious as she hadn't spotted her father yet, and still needed to introduce him to her new relatives. The banquet hall struck a balance between spaciousness and intimacy, and Terry discerned her father's preference for sitting somewhat isolated. Away from unnecessary company, a table specifically reserved for this purpose stood not far from the newlyweds. Terry anticipated that her father might not immediately gel with her in-laws. Eventually, he made his entrance, visibly pleased with his daughter's stunning appearance in her wedding attire. As he scanned the hall and moved to take his place, his gaze landed upon the groom's parents. Paul, Terry's father, froze in disbelief. He recognized these individuals all too well. And unfortunately, not from favorable circumstances. Memories flooded back. Memories heavy with a past stained by painful associations. It was Brian's father who, at one point, orchestrated events leading to Paul's wrongful imprisonment. However, Paul had no intention of disrupting his daughter's wedding with a confrontation, swiftly composing himself. He pulled his chair back and settled at the table. Yet, he couldn't mask the lingering discomfort that tainted the initial joy of the occasion. Nearly three decades prior, Paul had just embarked on married life and held a respectable position as a driver for a prosperous company. His job brought contentment. He received a fair wage. And the company's owners treated their employees impeccably. However, everything changed abruptly when the company's owner was found dead in Paul's car. Despite Paul's innocence, a lack of concrete evidence against him initially, suspicions emerged. The investigation took a dire turn when the widow began offering perplexing testimonies all of which painted Paul in an unfavorable light. Despite the absence of evidence against him at the outset, the widow's statements during the investigation twisted. The course of events against Paul. The floodgates of emotion burst open. And tears streamed down as the widow asserted that the driver, Paul, had persistently made inappropriate advances towards her. She claimed that she had eventually confided in her husband, sparking a serious altercation between the owner and the driver. Her words gained reinforcement when another family member corroborated her account, alleging witnessing the escalating conflict and threats made by the driver. Paul found himself devoid of evidence to prove his innocence. Consequently, he received a harsh 15-year prison sentence. Amidst this turmoil, only his steadfast young wife remained resolute in her belief in Paul's innocence. She became his unwavering pillar of support, writing encouraging letters and making regular visits. 
Their undying faith in each other bore fruit in the form of their daughter. Terry. However. Despite her unwavering support. Paul's wife lacked the legal acumen. Resources. And crucially. Financial means to champion his exoneration. During one of her visits. She disclosed a troubling revelation. The widow had remarried a family friend. The very person who supported her fabricated testimony. With adequate legal representation. Paul's innocence might have been proven. But devoid of resources and with their daughter. Still in her early years of schooling. Finding competent legal aid seemed an insurmountable challenge. Tragically. Paul's wife passed away. Leaving Terry under the care of her grandmother. Who raised her single-handedly through those years. Upon his release from prison. Paul was determined to start anew and live an honest life. However. Securing employment proved daunting for someone. Who had been imprisoned for a crime he didn't commit. Driven by a desperate desire to support his daughter. Paul succumbed to desperation. Resorting to theft and landing back in prison for another five years. Upon his release yet again. He struggled to locate his daughter but was overjoyed to. Find her thriving and about to embark on her marriage. The irony struck Paul deeply, Terry was marrying into. The very family that had decimated his life. His heartache was profound. Realizing that the man his daughter was marrying belonged. To the family responsible for his past miseries. Simultaneously. The groom's father recognized his old adversary. Feeling no remorse for the pivotal role he played in the man's tumultuous life. Instead. He harbored intentions of erasing the man from his family's existence. Ensuring certain buried secrets remained hidden. This calculated move might also serve to rid himself of the unwelcome bride. Contemplating these thoughts. A predatory grin adorned his face as he. Purposefully approached the microphone. Ladies and gentlemen. Esteemed guests. He announced eagerly. Today. We celebrate a double occasion. My son's wedding and the release from prison of the bride's father. Let us applaud a man who. Twice convicted and imprisoned for nearly two decades. Including a murder charge. Stands among us today. Appearing without having spent a single penny. His words hung in the air. Catching everyone by surprise. Guests found themselves in an awkward limbo. Some hesitantly clapped while others sat in uncomfortable silence. Unsure how to react to such a public spectacle. Paul. The bride's father. Wasn't merely stunned. He felt as if he were reliving the nightmare that once tore his life apart. This man. Likely responsible for his wrongful imprisonment. And possibly the true perpetrator of the murder. Shamelessly humiliated him in front of all the guests. Yet, Paul refrained from voicing the truth aloud. Unwilling to taint his daughter's celebratory moment. He rose from his seat. Offering a gracious bow to the guests. Then approached his daughter to plant a kiss on her cheek. Forgive me. My daughter. I was unaware of whose son you were marrying. Moreover. You were unaware. Paul expressed solemnly. Turning to Brian. He continued. Do you even know you're not the biological son of these two? They adopted you as an infant for your father's inheritance. A father whom they conspired to murder together. Subsequently framing me, remember. You're not responsible for the sins of your parents. Biological or adoptive. Terry's father added before leaving the scene. Paul's departure left a lingering silence. Thick with shock and disbelief. As the weight of his revelations settled among the guests. The tumultuous disclosure cast a shadow over the festivities. Forcing an uncomfortable reckoning of. Hidden truths and dark family secrets. Standing amidst confusion. The groom and bride exchanged bewildered glances. 
grappling with the sudden bombshell of revelations. Brian, in an attempt to regain composure, addressed Terry with a determined voice. Terry, let's not delve into this now. Let this day remain the happiest of our lives. We'll confront everything later. I genuinely had no knowledge. Just like you. Brian assured her. Seeking solace in the possibility of addressing. The revelations after the chaos settled. Subsequently. The wedding unfolded but followed a slightly. Altered trajectory due to the shocking disclosure. Bernard made an attempt to approach his son for a conversation. While Stephanie. Citing ill health. Made an abrupt exit from the celebration. Tears streamed down the bride's face. Casting a pall over the otherwise festive atmosphere. The newlyweds. Overwhelmed by the day's events. Opted to skip the groom's parents' opulent residence. Choosing instead to retreat to a hotel for their wedding night. Seeking solace and a reprieve from the unforeseen turmoil. However. Amidst the confusion. They remained perplexed. Struggling to comprehend the whirlwind of events. Meanwhile. Brian's parents engaged in a heated altercation of their own. Stephanie's voice resonated with frustration and apprehension. Can't you see my intuition screamed that this entire wedding. This Terry. It wasn't right. I wanted to prevent it all. But you acted rashly. Divorce isn't the issue. Our reputation is at stake. Letting them marry might land us in jail. Stephanie's concern was palpable. Her partner countered. Dismissing the concerns with a mix of frustration and arrogance. Stop being irrational. All deadlines have passed. This deceitful ex-convict can't prove anything now. Even if he blabs. He'll end up where he came from. Brian won't believe such nonsense. Frustration marked Stephanie's voice as she retorted. Brian fell for it. Who knows what he rambled on about? And what if Brian believes it? The disagreement simmered with uncertainty. Their once perfect world now rattled by unforeseen revelations. Stephanie's fears collided with her partner's dismissive attitude. Leaving the aftermath of the wedding shrouded in uncertainty and tension. Struggling to find solace. Stephanie resorted to medication but found no respite. Her mind was a tumult of convoluted memories and tangled life intricacies. Initially, her life seemed idyllic. In her youth, she orchestrated a marriage with a promising young man. Who burgeoned into a prominent businessman. With him, she acquired wealth and lived a life many would envy. Yet, this bliss was short-lived. Her husband's infidelity tore their world apart. He not only took a mistress but fell in love. Adamant about divorcing Stephanie. She attempted desperate measures. Even threatening suicide and contemplating horrendous. Acts towards her husband and his lover. However. His determination to pursue love remained unyielding. His mistress's pregnancy. A feat Stephanie couldn't accomplish. Threatened to strip her of her wealth. A reality she couldn't fathom. The husband postponed the divorce due to. The mistress's pregnancy-related health issues. Offering a glimmer of hope for Stephanie. She hoped the complications might lead to no child or mistress. Yet. Her hopes were dashed when the husband not only. Welcomed the child but also legally adopted him altering his will to leave everything to the newborn and his mother. With impending doom looming over her, Stephanie took decisive action, collaborating with her husband's partner, Bernard. She orchestrated a diabolical scheme. They orchestrated her husband's demise, skillfully diverting suspicion away from themselves, and framing an innocent driver. The plan unfolded flawlessly, including the mistress, who, still recuperating post-childbirth, received the shocking news of her lover's demise before he could propose. 
overwhelmed. She succumbed. Her demise shrouded in ambiguity. Whether from a minor heart episode or other causes. Stephanie seized the opportunity. Marrying Bernard. With calculated maneuvers and sizable bribes. She managed to evade scrutiny and secure a semblance of stability in the aftermath of her husband's demise. Her life's twisted path was now entwined with secrets and the burden of ruthless actions that secured her current state of existence. The adoption of Brian seemed like a golden ticket for Bernard and Stephanie, thrusting them into the role of legal parents to a wealthy heir. Their access to Brian's fortune augmented their own financial stability, bolstered by their prosperous business ventures. However, amidst this prosperity, Terry emerged as an unfortunate complication, an unforeseen consequence of Brian's arrival, a twist that seemed almost diabolical. Bernard entered the room with a quiet demeanor, settling beside his wife. Their relationship lacked any overt affection, primarily built on necessity and convenience, interwoven by a shared dark secret. Stephanie. My dear. Bernard began in a calming tone. There's no need to fret. Brian will come. And we'll talk to him. We'll gauge his perspective. Perhaps he hasn't even considered believing that individual. Even if he has. You can explain our situation without delving into specifics. Ultimately. Does his opinion truly hold such sway over you let's assume he rejects us. So what we have everything we require. And if we desire more. We'll acquire it. Unless. Of course. You've suddenly developed maternal instincts. Stephanie waved away Bernard's suggestion. It's not about sentiments. Bernard. It's about the abrupt upheaval of our lives. If rumors surface about our past. Whether substantiated or not. They'll linger. Tarnishing our reputation. We'll be too ashamed to face the public. The prospect of their dark secrets being unveiled. And their reputations marred by unverified. Gossip weighed heavily on Stephanie. The uncertainty of how their past might be perceived not at her, making her apprehensive about the repercussions, regardless of the truth's actual revelation. Oh. Come on. We've faced tougher situations before. And if Brian decides to cause trouble, we'll handle it. What if his business ventures come our way that could work out well? Don't you think? Stephanie inquired, seeking assurance from Bernard. When have I ever failed in arranging things? Brian retorted confidently. I may not have been able to prevent this wedding. Matters of love intervened. Unfortunately. That's not my forte. However. In business. I excel. Rest assured. I won't coddle Brian. Nor will I regret him. Despite their conversation. There was no need for explanations or demands for clarification. A few days later, Brian and his young wife visited his supposed parents' house, intending to make a significant announcement. Sorry. Supposed parents. Brian began resolutely. Over these past few days, I discovered the truth from Terry's father. I am an adopted son. You may not have been completely worthless parents. But you're not my biological parents. Our relationship harbors some unpleasant moments. Terry and I have decided to live separately. We're independent and hope to avoid any future conflicts. I'm not delving into the past. As answers to all the questions are bound to remain elusive. Bernard responded calmly to Brian's revelation. Acknowledging their decision to keep the adoption a secret. However, he questioned Brian's inclination to believe. The drunken ramblings of Terry's father-in-law. A criminal. And questioned whether Brian was willing. To sever ties with his supposed parents. 
I'm not disowning anyone. I simply want to lead a separate life. I'm a grown man. Married now. Brian asserted firmly. Unyielding in his decision. Stephanie. Attempting a display of tragic disappointment. Started wringing her hands. Hinting at Brian's ingratitude. However. Realizing her dramatic performance wouldn't be well received. She abruptly stopped. You still owe us gratitude. She remarked. Ending with a hint that Brian might regret his decision. And turn back to them for help. Potentially feeling ashamed. Bernard. Choosing not to engage in a verbal confrontation. Merely shrugged in response to his son's words. Maintaining a stance of non-confrontation. As Brian bid his farewells to Terry. Silently contemplating the situation's gravity. He ventured into his wife's room. Where Stephanie was pacing with. An unrestrained air of agitation. Her anger radiated palpably within the confines of the room. A tempestuous force seeking an outlet in her restless pacing. In an attempt to soothe her rising anxiety. She murmured. Everything appears to be in order. Doesn't it our standing? Our reputation. Unscathed. That fool simply chose to abandon the familial abode. Behaving like any average individual. Her words tinted with an attempt at reassurance. Bernard. Observing the brewing storm within his wife. Stepped in with his own brand of solace. Attempting to calm the tempest brewing within Stephanie's being. Stephanie. Cease your self-torment. He advised. Trying to subdue the storm of her emotions. Normalcy doesn't involve living under the same roof as one's parents. Spare yourself the turmoil. He added. Striving to quell her relentless pacing. In response to Bernard's attempts at calming the situation. Stephanie. Still fervent in her resolve. Expressed her unequivocal demands. Proceed. Bernard. Proceed with your plan. I want him destitute. On his knees. Begging for the basic necessities. She implored with fervor. Her words laced with a resolute determination. Unwavering in her desire for Brian's downfall. Bernard. Basking in the sinister satisfaction of impending retribution. Assured his wife. Consider it done. My dear. His smile, tinged with a malicious satisfaction, betrayed the dark undercurrents of his impending scheme. In the aftermath of their honeymoon, Brian resumed the helm of his business. Initially unperturbed by the routine operations of his company. However, with the introduction of a new financial director, seemingly competent and beneficial to the enterprise, Little did Brian know that this appointment was orchestrated by Bernard. A strategic move to plunge Brian's company into financial ruin. Under the guise of experience and competence. This new financial director was a clandestine. Expert in orchestrating the downfall of businesses. With calculated skill and imperceptible cunning. He meticulously plotted within the company engineering a gradual yet devastating decline in its fortunes. Unaware of this subterfuge, Brian remained oblivious as his company teetered. On the brink of imminent bankruptcy, its resources rapidly dwindling. Despite the turmoil brewing within his company, Brian steadfastly refused to seek assistance from his father. Determined to navigate the tumultuous period with only Terry by his side, her unwavering support became his anchor. Providing solace amid the tempest. Reassuring him that together. They would weather the storm and remain resolute against impending failure. Brian. Perhaps it's time we consider letting go of all this. Terry suggested with a heavy heart. I can't bear to see you suffer for the sake of this company. But how will we manage? Terry we plan to buy a house. And now we can't even afford rent for an apartment. Brian fretted. Weighed down by their financial turmoil. 
I think we should give up everything. We could move to the village. My grandfather's house is there. It's sturdy and suitable for living. Though not quite like what we're used to. We can gradually fix things up. Terry proposed. Trying to find a solution. I'm a city person. Terry. I have no idea how to manage in a country house. Especially fixing a leaking roof. Brian admitted his reservations. We'll figure it out. Brian. It's not as daunting as it seems. Besides. We can take my father with us. He's idle in the city. But he's skilled at managing things in the village. Terry reassured Brian. Buoyed by the prospect of a new beginning. Brian was excited yet apprehensive about the idea. Moving to the village had been a distant dream. One he had never dared to entertain. Eventually. They made the transition. Brian parted ways with his luxurious car and unnecessary possessions. Using the remaining funds to initiate their new life in the village. Soon after settling in. Terry shared the joyful news. She was pregnant. Brian's happiness knew no bounds. And even his adoptive parents rejoiced upon. Hearing about their son's bankruptcy. Eagerly awaiting his plea for assistance. Meanwhile. Stephanie rehearsed stern retorts in anticipation. Of Brian's anticipated appeal for help. However. Brian never approached them for assistance. Bernard. In a rather nonchalant manner. Informed Stephanie about their son's relocation to the village. Which caught her by surprise. He moved to some remote place. Terry apparently had some barn there. Oh. My goodness. He's so proud. Bernard chuckled. He didn't even come to seek our help. Well. It's his choice. He'll live there for a while and probably return to the city eventually. How long can he last in the village? He mused with a tinge of sarcasm. Amidst their callous laughter. Stephanie and Bernard. Devoid of any sympathy for Brian. Terry. Or their potential future children. Amused themselves like children. Relishing in the potential downfall of the man they had once called their son. Their lack of concern was palpable as. They indulged in speculative mockery of Brian's predicament. Meanwhile. The young family led a modest yet content life filled with hope and optimism. Paul found solace in returning to his roots. While Terry. Finding comfort in the familiar surroundings. Adapted swiftly to their new environment. Even Brian. Despite initial reservations. Adjusted to the rural setting surprisingly well. One day. Paul regaled an intriguing tale to his daughter and son-in-law. Recounting an encounter from his previous prison term. During my last stint in prison. He began. I met an elderly man who had spent. His life wandering from one prison to another. As a token of gratitude for a favor. He divulged a secret he held close. When he was free. He had robbed a jewelry store. Amassing a considerable loot that he never got the chance to use. He knew he wouldn't be released and didn't want the loot to go to waste. Paul continued. He had hidden it in a secret place not far from where we are. In an abandoned village. Terry waved off the idea. Dismissing it as a belief in miracles. Dad. You're believing in something highly improbable. She remarked. Paul defended the notion. Citing the credibility of the old man. Who seemed sincere even in the throes of death. He had no reason to deceive me. He insisted. Contemplating the possibility of exploring the hidden treasure. With Terry's nonchalant agreement and skepticism. Paul ventured to the abandoned village, reaching the purported location. True to the old man's tale. He discovered an abandoned hut. Albeit one barely standing. The basement. Where the loot was supposedly hidden. 
posed a challenge. It was unsafe. Requiring caution. With meticulous care. Paul assessed the risky structure. Contemplating whether the treasure tale was indeed a reality or a mere delusion. Paul cautiously stepped into the inhabited house. Startled by the sight of a young boy nestled in the corner. With surprise coloring his tone. Paul inquired. What brings you here? I live here. What do you want? The boy responded boldly. Curious about the boy's circumstances. Paul probed further. But where are your parents? I don't have any. Ran away from an orphanage. If you're planning to send me back. You better leave quietly. I'm staying here. Replied the boy with a mix of defiance and vulnerability. Shedding tears that hinted at his hunger and tender age. Moved by the boy's plight. Paul offered what little he had. I have some food. Come with me. I won't take you back to the orphanage. You can live with me. Skeptical yet yearning for a chance at a better life. The boy. Named Ivan. Asked hesitantly. Will your wife be okay if I come with you? I don't have a wife. I have a grown-up daughter who's married. Clarified Paul. Reassuring Ivan of a safe haven away from his current predicament. Eventually. Ivan agreed to accompany Paul. Albeit with some doubt but holding on to. A glimmer of hope for a fresh start. While exploring the hut for the rumored treasure. Paul found no riches. However. He discovered something far more precious. A young boy in need of guidance and care. Returning home with Ivan. Paul introduced the boy to his family. Declaring. This is Ivan. My treasure. He needs a home. I cannot legally adopt him due to my age and past. But don't worry. I'll take care of him myself. I can take care of myself. Ivan asserted. Revealing his independent spirit. Paul was overjoyed at the prospect of nurturing a child. Feeling blessed to have Ivan in his life. A son or even a grandson. Ivan. As it turned out. Was indeed a treasure. Independent. Earnest. Always ready to lend a hand. And eager to learn anything that came his way. Brian and Terry navigated the adoption process for Ivan. Although it came with its own set of challenges and costs. Discovering that Ivan was older than initially assumed. They had to acquire official documents and. Enroll him in first grade as his education. At the orphanage had been scarce. However. Despite these initial hurdles. Their household gradually transformed into. A more comfortable and welcoming space. In a startling turn of events. Brian learned that his adoptive parents had also faced financial ruin. The same deceitful financial director. Responsible for orchestrating the downfall of Brian's company had targeted Brian's adoptive parents' finances as well. This relentless swindler, seemingly emboldened by past successes, continued siphoning funds from Bernard's company. When Bernard finally caught wind of the embezzlement, he promptly reported it to the authorities. The subsequent investigation not only revealed the ongoing embezzlement but also unveiled a web of shady dealings orchestrated by Bernard. As the legal proceedings progressed, both the financial director and Bernard found themselves entangled in a legal quagmire, each attempting to implicate the other in various illicit activities. Brian found himself involved in the legal proceedings as a witness and victim, leading to a partial recovery of some of the misappropriated funds. Although a significant portion had been transferred offshore, the restitution was beneficial, especially considering the birth of his daughter during this tumultuous period. Despite his severed ties with his adoptive parents after the wedding, Brian harbored concerns for Stephanie's fate. 
she avoided a courtroom trial but found herself isolated and destitute. Left without any financial resources or support. The legal aftermath left a trail of revelations. Implicating both the fraudulent financial director and Bernard in their illicit dealings, while Brian navigated the chaos. Reclaiming what was salvageable for his growing family. Brian contemplated the idea of extending help to Stephanie in her dire situation. But he soon discovered that her predicament wasn't as dire as she pretended it to be. Despite her theatrics in court, Stephanie had safeguarded her own financial assets. Separate from her husband's holdings, her furious response to Brian's offer of assistance revealed that she had sufficient resources of her own, putting an end to any lingering thoughts of helping her. Feeling a sense of relief after severing ties with his adoptive parents, Brian returned home and shared the surprising resolution of the case with his true family. Reflecting on the unexpected turn of events, he couldn't help but acknowledge the complex dynamics he had lived through. Appreciating the lack of any genetic connection to his adoptive parents and hoping to avoid any negative inheritance associated with them. Paul, offering his perspective, dismissed the significance of material inheritance, emphasizing the importance of being a decent human being. He pointed out examples like Ivan's parents, acknowledging their imperfections but highlighting how Ivan thrived despite any shortcomings, despite the financial windfall they received. The family opted not to relocate to the city, realizing that nothing tethered them there anymore. They found contentment in their current surroundings, cherishing the simplicity and unity they had established in their new life.